Folks, check it out. I'm here with Austin Maliolo at the Reebok World Headquarters, and he's gonna give me a tour, and it's gonna be awesome. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, look at that. That's a, that's a big ass Reebok sign, buddy. And that's, a, that, that's, that's, our, that's our new logo and, and word mark. It's essentially unifying uh, under one word mark and one logo in our brand now. It's, and it just recently unveiled yesterday, which is pretty cool. So this is all brand new. It's pretty exciting stuff. So it's, um, for those that know a lot of uh, you know, Reebok history, that will look pretty familiar. The Vector logo. Right now, the, the office is pretty empty, huh? Yeah, so like right now it's, gosh, I mean, it's six o'clock, so I mean, a lot, you know, you'll see some sort of, you know, people walking around and stuff like that, but this is as quiet as it gets. You know, and certainly in the, uh, you know, we're in the seaport, we're in Boston, which is really awesome, so, you know, now it's time for people to head out to, you know, there's a bunch of restaurants and things like that, which is really cool. And this headquarters that we've, we've been here for two years, um, so we're still relatively new, and um, this area, the seaport, if you're not familiar, is up and coming, so like it's, I mean, if you fly into Boston, you'll actually see this building, depending on which runway you come down on, you'll see our sign up top, which is brand new, it's legit, so you sit, make sure you sit on the left side of the plane, window seat, and hope you get on the right one way, runway, I think it's like runway six, just, I don't fly a lot or anything. That right there is like the exact type of elite performance tips that I would expect <laughs> from a CrossFit coach giving the tour of the Reebok headquarters. Yeah. You know, and, and as we kind of walk in here, that was the main area, but this is this is like the epicenter, it's the lifeblood of, of what we see at the Reebok HQ. This is a cafeteria. I mean, any, 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 anywhere there's caffeine, there's usually productivity happening, right? So, you no. Know, I mean, these are just things that it's easy to take for granted. But I mean, there's you have we have Nitro Brew on tap in the middle of the headquarters. Good things happen. This area. This is a. You know, we, we host a lot of all company meetings here. This is the an area where you know our brand president will address all sorts of stuff, and you know, we, like we'll do it from the gym. Like we've had nutrition presentations here, so a lot of stuff happens here. It's an open seating plan, so I mean, people you'll see people actually working here throughout the day because the desks are very similar depending on what we do, which is pretty cool. Some things like that, as you know, the CrossFit coach in me forgets to appreciate, but like the, like the art on the wall is really cool. This was like hand done. So for those that, uh, and if I'm not mistaken, the artist is WK Interact, really cool, and he's done a lot of stuff across the world, but, you know, and as you go up the, the stairs, you'll just see that, you know, a lot of the inspiration, he actually did the whole thing at, you know, at our old headquarters and prepping for the move, but it just motion. So again, I'm not artistically inclined, but we have unbelievable talent here. So for those that are aware of that world, this is, this is a pretty special, um, you know, tidbit in the office that, if you never leave the gym, you don't see. So this is, uh, this is like where the cool kids sit. Um, this is like our newsroom, our PR. So you just see like TVs and data, and it's like it's very open. It's uh, every time I walk by, I feel like they're they're doing unbelievable things, which they probably are way above my pay grade. But um, just tapped into sort of the lifeblood of what's going on, social media, all that good stuff. And as we walk through here, this is you know. This is where we have a lot of creative stuff. We're not really allowed in there because they're super progressive and uh, creative what's going on. I mean, they're designing stuff all the way out to fall winter 21. Whoa. You guys really, really are missing out here. <laughs> That's the point. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, it's, it's cool. I mean, the, the, the creativity. I mean, if I go in there, I, I, I can't, I bring the creativity down. So I usually just wave to make sure that they're, uh, they're floating. But a really cool aspect is over here now, this is our archive. And as we kind of walk through, it's the most robust archive of its kind in the entire industry, which is really awesome. I mean, you can, you know, as you kind of show in here, I mean, the, the, I just remember when they were curating this collection, it was actually in our headquarters as we were moving here. And I would go back there and they'd have white gloves on. It was really, you know, at first I was like, what's happening? But now it's, they literally have from our first track spikes to like some of Shaquille O'Neal's first shoes that he had when he was with Reebok. Um, it's really, really awesome. And, and heritage is a huge aspect of our brand. Um, so they do tours and they do a lot of stuff here. But it's one of those things where I love the history of it. You can nerd out on it, but it's, you, can, you can get dive pretty deep in there, which is pretty cool stuff. One of my favorite parts of the building is that it's, it's open open seating, but then also as you kind of come over here, it might be hard to see at night, but this is a true dry dock. So this is not a building right here, that's actually a ship. And it, it, it comes in, it's been, a, it's been here for about almost five, six months now. Um, and it's a full dry dock, so they, they, they pour the water out of it and they work on it. 
um, and they do it all the time. And, and right on the other side of it's the airport, but it's it's cool to see. I mean, they work there 24 hours, and they'll they'll pull the ship out. Like last one, we had a, like a, like a military tanker in there, which was pretty cool. So the it's tr you still have some true like Boston roots, which is pretty legit. Um, this building is an innovation and design building, and. But prior to that, it was a military warehouse. So um, there's actually like railroad tracks in the front of it where they'd actually like take out like, you know, tanks and things like that. And that's why it's a robust building, but it's 2.1 million square feet tipped up on its side. It'd be, it'd be the tallest building in Boston, which is pretty cool. Now, um, forgive the ignorant question, Yeah. but is this where the tea party happened? Is this the Harbor? It is the Boston Harbor. Yeah. I mean, it, so, so I actually, someone just asked that question and the answer is yes. I mean, I don't know the actual latitude and longitude where it happened, but yeah, the Boston tea party happened here. I mean, I mean, you, in the amount of history, right where we are is, I mean, we were in a cent like you, you could throw a stone to Southie. You know, and, and you know, and now, and then you're in, you know, the the true seaport, which is really cool stuff. And um, there's about 720 Reebok employees here on site at the world headquarters. And you know, we have global headquarters all over, but this is sort of that epicenter, which is cool. And uh, you know, it's I what I love about it is that it's a lot easier to get to now. I mean, you hop off the plane, you're here. Um, and it's you know, it's in two years, three years from now, you won't even you won't recognize the area. I mean, I mean it's building up so much. I mean, two years when we moved here. I can't, I don't even know what's happened. It's unreal. So it's pretty cool stuff. Awesome, man. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. But it wasn't just a tour of Reeboks HQ. That was awesome. I actually got a chance to see a history of the Nanos completely laid out in front of me and explained by the guy who's in charge of making them. Tal, tell me a little bit about what you do here. Yeah, so my title is I'm a senior product manager. So what that really means is I write the original brief and then I see the shoe all the way through, all the way to sell in. Um, and then actually when it gets to the stores, like I'll do different videos online. And, and so really I get to see the whole shoe from the very beginning all the way to the end. So it, it's been fun and we work on multiple nanos at once. So you can imagine what we're working on right now. Um, then by the time shoes actually hit the market, we've almost forgotten about them. And it's, it's fun to kind of revisit when they launch and you see all the marketing behind you. Like, man that was a good shoe and then you're always trying to like get better and always trying to improve our products so it's a fun challenge and then you get into the nano 2 which we call is like really the instant classic right away this shoe just took off you can see there's not a big change we did make some adjustments like we're always learning so when we had the one like the toe area for example kept tearing out on the shoe so we made sure to cover that up when we did the Nano 2. I gotta say the Nano 2 is my personal yeah, favorite. Yeah, and you'll those. find a lot of the community like it. I think part of it is, and I'll get into the inspiration on the 9, but it looks like a lifestyle shoe as well, right? So it's easy to wear, but it's also very recognizable if you're in the airport or something, you see one, you're like, ah, he's a CrossFitter, and that's an OG CrossFitter. He's got the Nano 2 on. Uh, the 3, I like to call this the tank. This thing is, we were like, okay, it's CrossFit, let's make it super durable, so let's put plastic all over the shoe. Um, and as you can see, we actually did put plastic all over the shoe. So this thing, uh, you still see people wearing these, and I'll, when I go around to different boxes, they'll still be sitting in the cubbies, and they're still in pretty good shape. Four, I kind of like, so if this is the tank, this is like the Hummer. Like we still covered it, and we made it, we put the PU casting all over it, made it super durable, but we kind of dialed it back. So we, we lightened it up a little bit, so I like to say this is the tank, and then th this is really the Hummer. The four is actually probably the second most popular nano. So two and four, um, really, those are your like kind of the older nanos. Those are, have been the favorites. Uh, so you'll see we still bring out the four as well. I think most iconically, Froning wore this for a long time. That was his shoe, the black red one. I mean, it sold out right away, and he won you know a couple championships in it. So that's obviously an icon iconic one there. Then we got really super technical. We, we call it the Bulletproof Nano. So we're like, all right, cool. We want protection, but now we want to do it in a lightweight version. So we added in Kevlar. Really the Nano 6, um, this, is, uh, this is a funny story here. So I call it the Colt Classic, because right away, this shoe kind of just had a slow burn to it. So we were coming off the 5. It was a pretty popular Nano, but when we brought the 6 out, it was the first time we, we introduced the large Delta on the side. We weren't 100% sure how it was going to do, so we're like, all right, let's just test it out. When we brought it out, it was like, okay, people liked it, but they really liked the fit of the shoe. So we went back to just a more traditional mesh. We kept the Kevlar kind of in the areas you needed. And what, we, what was born was, as the shoe progressed, it just got more and more popular. Unfortunately, we had already made the decision on the Nano 7 to bring it up. So the idea was normally each Nano we run for about a year. 
For the Nano 6, it was only a six month shoot. And the reason behind that is, we wanted to launch the Nano with the start of the open. So we had to move it up at some point. So we're like, all right, we're not sure about the six. Let's go ahead and move up the seven. No worries, it'll work out. Well, people love the six. And so when we brought up the seven, obviously there was some hesitation because they were like, hey, we love the six. Why are you changing it on us? They didn't know that we had made this decision about a year ago. So. Uh, we had some fun kind of transition period as we get into the 7. The 7, I like to call it the beginning because it's the first time that we've introduced FlexWeave, which we still use today. So without the 7, you're not getting the 8 and the 9. So this technology that we found here, maybe it wasn't the most refined and perfect um, upper material right away, but as we've evolved it, it's now become definitely the most important thing on a Nano. So yes, it maybe wasn't our most popular Nano, but it was super important to the whole franchise. Then as we get into the 8, I like to call this kind of the community nano. So we took kind of all the things that we had been learning. Um, the good news is we took a lot of things that people loved about the six and we brought it into the eight. So it was that wearability, that comfort, like make sure it's super comfortable. Um, so the idea was let's build just a, an awesome shoe. This is really where we define performance comfort as our, as our category. So it's like, you know what, just because it's a super technical shoe doesn't mean that it can't be wearable and comfortable. And then that led us right into the nine. So the nine was a fun challenge because the eight was below like eight as far as if you look at any of the reviews or any of the comments like no one really had any issues with the eight which the is shoes I brought are the eights actually yeah so, so like, that's what I brought with me whenever you're building shoes like if you guys know within the, the like footwear industry like we're building lots of different shoes all at once and so we're learning real-time info on this that we're trying to apply to the next one and so unfortunately as we were digging through all the, the stuff there was not a lot to like, hey, we need to fix this, we need to fix that. The, the one thing that we came about was runnability and even more wearability. So just how we define it as more comfort. So we made some, some changes to the nine to really affect that. And the one thing was the runnability. We split the rubber on the bottom. So all the rest of these have full rubber on the bottom with no split. If you've ever run a Nano or any training shoe by any brand, if it's full rubber, you hear this like smack feeling when you run. So what we did was we made sure to not have that happen with the nine. We split the rubber so it allows for a little more, more flexibility because you still in a CrossFit shoe need the full coverage of rubber. Idea is break it up, allow it to flex, and make it more runnable. The curse is over. Yeah. <laughs> we called it, literally I wrote on the board, reverse the curse. Like, when I first briefed the shoe, it was like literally on top of the board. First thing a whiteboard, it was like reverse the curse. And what curse is that? There's a stigma out there that our odd nanos aren't as popular as our even. So we know that, we, we, we listen to the feedback, like we're, we're, we're in this community. So it's like, we want to play that up internally. Now you won't see that in any sort of marketing because they'll tell you it's not good to talk about your own, you know, bad product or less like. So we're like, you know what, let's have some fun with this. And so it, we, we've been, I've been throwing out the hashtag for a little bit just for some fun with the nine. And a lot of people ask like, hey, is the curse over? And yep, it's done. So that was a, that was a big win for us.